Mr. Prince, when did you first become involved as director of Candide? 1973, I guess. I had just finished a little night music, and I was looking for something to do, and Bob Calfin, who ran the Chelsea Theatre Center in Brooklyn, small and marvelously experimental theater on the fourth floor of the Brooklyn Academy, was after me to resurrect it. And uh, that's a long story, because uh, its resurrection required a new libretto entirely. Its first uh, production had been in the mid 1950s. 56, yeah. With a different libretto. Oh, yeah. Lillian Hellman wrote the original libretto. I, I, it, it's, uh, it's both appreciated and maligned. I think it's probably good stuff. I don't think it and the score go together. I, sort of I just didn't. I thought the spirit of the, of the score was uh, optimistic and uh, jolly most of the time and naive. And I thought the book was uh, very cynical. And uh, they just didn't mesh. That happens once in a while. How did you go about making the changes you felt? Well, necessary? we got a jolly, got a jolly book, I think, a jolly and, and a jolly author. That and, jolly uh, well, book. Hugh Wheeler, uh, with whom I worked a lot. He was he also did. the author of Little Night Music. Uh, book, yeah, he? and uh, and he's done since uh, Sweeney Todd. Uh, the thing is that he got interested immediately, and we both went back to the Voltaire, and it, it's it's dazzling and sour, and it leaves a terrible, bitter aftertaste all the time. Uh, so, uh, we, uh, we decided you couldn't use that score and have that the dominant emotional weight of the, of the libretto. So, so the score remained essentially the same. The score remained essentially production. the same, though we needed, it never had an opening that, that we felt worked, and we asked Sondheim to write us an opening using some of Lenny's music, which he did. And that opening set the characters up and so on. A lot of work was done. Is a that lot part of work. Of the current production, the Sondheim opening? Oh, there? sure. There, there's Sondheim lyrics throughout. There are a lot of lyricists. And uh, the, uh, the book is essentially the same as the one we had, uh, had in Brooklyn. But the Opera House version, which is what this is called. Yes, we now call it the Opera House Well, it is. Opera it's House vastly version. different from the 74 from version. We re restored some music and got some new lyrics from Wilbur, who's a dazzling lyricist, absolutely wonderful lyricist. Uh, so Richard Wilbur gave us some new material. We restored some numbers, quite a few. It's much more musical than it was originally. You have been on the forefront for many years of perhaps erasing the rigid lines between opera on the one hand yeah. and musical <laughs> comedy or musical theater on the other. Is Candide a kind of key work in the sure, doing that? Sure, I think so. I think it's very healthy that uh, Candide is, uh, is playing in this opera house. It was a sold out smash in New York. It's sold out at every single performance now for two seasons at the New York State Theater. It's a big place. Indeed, yeah. And uh, I think uh, now Sweeney Todd will be done here, and then later on you're, at you're New York. You're coming back again to Houston uh, yeah, next summer for Sweeney Todd. in June. The thing is that I think that, that, that we must erase that. I think there's an audience that, that uh, worships operas and, and thinks of, uh, identifies opera with kind of museum uh, and material. There are some purists, I think, who would never well, admit something they, like that. Well, they'll, 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 they'll the, resent the it. World. On the other hand, there are an awful lot of people who won't set foot in an opera house because they don't have a good enough time there. And... Uh, uh, I don't think that's so in the case of, of uh, this piece, and I don't believe it will be with Sweeney Todd, and I think that's very healthy. I think what we want to do is get a young audience back into opera houses. Are we seeing the time, and I suppose we are, in which the same work might go between a Broadway Absolutely. theater and an opera house somewhere? Absolutely. After all, what, what were operas? What, what was Puccini writing, if not popular musical theater? He was, he was doing his version of... Uh, uh, Let's face it, uh, um, Fanchula, which I directed, is a, a musical comedy or a musical thriller, I guess. Uh, there's, no, there's no difference between their priorities and, and contemporary priorities. There is a considerable difference, however, in a lot of the quality of the work. A lot of the quality of, of contemporary musical theater isn't up to snuff. 
Is there a major economic problem between <laughs> producing on Broadway and producing for the opera? Oh, uh, there's a terrible a life. Uh, was a recent case. A, well, that'll, that'll, end that'll end up in it opera. That'll end up in opera houses. But Beverly Sills wants to do that, and I just said, give us some time. I feel that that's a very similar experience to the Candide one. I think Doll's Life will make a wonderful uh, recovery on the opera stage. Problem with musical theater right now is it costs somewhere between, on the low side, three million and on the more average side, side five million dollars to do a new production. I read the other day the budget originally for Oklahoma, which was about 30 years uh, ago, was $85,000. Mm. And now you're saying five million dollars. My first show, my first show was Pajama Game. That cost 169000 How have the costs escalated so much faster than the uh, general inflationary trends have in the theater? Uh, people not watching as carefully as they should. Mm. Is there a danger indulgence. a $50 top ticket now on Broadway of the theater becoming the preserve only of the affluent? Mm -hmm. and the elite? That's what it is right now, and I think there's a danger of it continuing to be that. What is the solution? I'm trying to ad address myself to that, but at the same time, I'm finding myself working further and further from Broadway and uh, letting other people decide what belongs on Broadway or no. I just did a play in Princeton at the McCarter uh, and also at the Annenberg in Philadelphia. I, uh, it's a beautiful play called Play Memory. It's a very serious play in the mold of Salesman or Streetcar or The Glass Menagerie. I wanted to do that play. No one in his right mind would do that play originally for Broadway. First of all, it costs about $800,000 today to just to do a play. So I did it there, and I just waited. I didn't hustle it or, or peddle it, but ultimately uh, Alex Cohen came to see it, loved it, and has scheduled it for Broadway in April. That's Wonderful. perfect. I love that. I don't even like thinking about raising money. You'd rather direct than produce, then? I, I never enjoyed producing, not remotely. Uh, a necessity I, to get the show up, though. That's Somebody what has to it was. And as a matter of fact, darn good thing I, I was a producer first because I'm the only one I knew who would hire me as a director. <laughs> so, your own boss that A way, number right? of years I hired myself, and then finally other people made me offers, but it took quite a long time. People love you. Uh, pigeonholed. Oh, indeed, yes. You know. You're becoming almost a part-time Houstonian. You were here with us last year for Willie Stark, and you're back now for Candide, right. and you'll be back for Sweeney Todd in the summer. Any future plans uh, with Houston Grand Opera after Well, Sweeney? no, but I think David Gockley and I get along very well, so, I mean... Any yeah. projects you'd like to propose? Uh, I'll be absolutely honest with you. I'm... Uh, my plate's kind of full for the next year and a half to two years. I'm supposed to do a, a new opera of Luciano Berrios, and that's being done very, very strangely. It's called uh, The True Story. Uh, and uh, what, I'm, what has been proposed, nothing to do with me, is, is a consortium of three opera companies, Covent Garden, Paris Opera, and Chicago. The three of them are putting up the capital for the opera. This is a new trend, apparently. And it'll opera open production. in, yes, well, they've been doing that here, of course, Quite and right. it'll open in Paris, and then it'll go to Covent Garden, and a whole year later, it'll play in Chicago. That's fun. Uh, you that's, don't get impatient, though, over that period of time waiting no, for No, I'll be uh, working on something else. I, what I've just, I've got a, enough things to do at this point that I'm not thinking about the future that much. Well, keep Houston in mind for your future. Uh, I, I like working here. And thank you so much for visiting with us. Pleasure.